see these areas are pretty undesirable, yeah, at one stage in time. And then all of a sudden, everybody's heads turns and be like, oh, what about Peckham? What about Lewisham? What about Brixton? And that reason actually tends to be, okay, a concerted effort by businesses, developers, local councils as well to say, okay, um, that area is underpriced, right? It's considered undesirable right now, but if we all come together and develop a regeneration plan for this area, we can make it desirable and up and coming. And that's how it works, right? People make a decision, they mobilize to invest in an area and it becomes desirable. A lot of people who've moved here, they, they, they didn't even know about Brixton. Right. They weren't like, oh God, it's so cool, it's Jamaica, blah, blah. They were just like, oh, the house prices are slightly cheaper than Clapham. Right. So I'm gonna go here. Yeah. I think that happens as well. So I think you get those two different things occurring. And I'd also finish it off by saying like, I'm part of the problem as well. Yeah. I'm a white boy, not from London. And I'm running a reggae record shop in here, so like... I'm sorry, that is mad though. Um, look, I I think, I, you know, I've, over the years, my opinion has changed. I, I started off by thinking all gentrification is bad. I, I disagree, right? I think it's bad if the incumbent population community are being driven out. And how do they get driven out? You know, like rising rents, or if they're in council homes, literally they get told to move, elbowed out, right? So... In that sense, if you have no chance or no opportunities to participate. So, for example, you know, local council slash government could say, OK, we're conscious that you've been here for generations, for decades. We can give you certain programs, grants, schemes to afford to buy your house where you live. And, you know, making sure that there's some kind of cap on those prices. People might say right to buy scheme and ones like that, which are good schemes. But even so, yeah, the prices of those houses, even with those discounts supplied, are still out of the reach for a lot of the people that have been there for a while, okay? But also, there is a responsibility on the people that have been there and the communities that have been there for a while to be more future-minded and be like, hey, look, I've seen gentrification happen here, here, here. We live in what's deemed an undesirable neighborhood or area right now. We probably should be next or could be next when it comes to regeneration, if not now, five, 10 years. Why don't we buy our house now, okay? Complacency, and I think we need to be honest about that, is a big issue for a lot of these communities who are in these areas as well. I can't, I can't uh, disassociate myself from the whole thing, you know? I try and make efforts to not be a dickhead about it, but like, I am here. Sorry, yeah, my original point was it is crazy. It's like a microcosm of gentrification. White guy comes into a black Caribbean neighborhood, sets up shop, he's not even from London or South East London, and he says, you know what, of all the businesses I can run, I'm gonna run a reggae shop. Wild optics. Thank you for watching. This year I'm making a video every month to answer any questions that you have for me. So whether you wanna know whether you should invest in a limited company or in your own name, whether you should buy a flat or a house, what is the best way to get started in property or who my barber is, just let me know. You can ask me in the comment section below, on Instagram, on TikTok, and I'll make a video dedicated to your questions. Like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.